Welcome back, everybody. This is uh, We All Play Cast, and today we're going to be doing our power situation and uh, taking a look at a few things. First thing I want to show off here is what I have for our lava cell generation, and where we are is we are in the nether, and we are actually over top of a lava pool, and we're using the power of Mistcraft to really protect ourselves here, and the way that we're doing that is I built this uh, basically completely enclosed area and I've created a linking book back to the overworld which we do here and just to show you on our previous episode we talked about uh, creating the linking books in this craft so actually I want to create one uh, I do want to create one on the level above where I am right now but I'll do that in just a second I just want to explain the system that I have going on here unfortunately we don't have a way to right click on just the lava to make lava cells so we use the deployer from red power 2 and what it's doing is it basically operates as though it's right clicking on whatever it's pointed at and in this case it's a in a um, from a pump we go into the, our, our lava into our, our our glass containers here and then what it does is it basically fills a lava bucket and this is a filter and as you can see it's filtering out lava buckets which is important otherwise it would also pull out just the regular buckets too and in this case, this is the uh, one of the few needs that we have for the crafting table Mark II. This is one thing that we don't use very often, but uh, nonetheless, uh, actually we're about to run out of empty cells. This is one drawback I have of the system. I don't have an empty cell generator here, but uh, that's going to be easily remedied as you'll see in a second. So then, see now it's done. Um, nowhere else to go. It's going to pump some buckets around. It'll probably fill this up with lava and then... Uh, will be done. Alright, but at any rate, all right, this is a crafting table, automatic crafting table Mark II, and let's just take a look at the recipe for that. Now, automatic crafting tables, uh, we'll start with that one actually, it's just a regular crafting table surrounded in four wooden gears, and what that normally allows you to do is put in a recipe, and when it gets the required amount of items, it will move on to the next one. You can pull it out with build craft pipes as a, a wooden transport pipe or something of the, of the like. Unfortunately, what happens here is the automatic crafting table one will not work because it has a lava bucket, which is a non-stackable item. So we need to use the crafting uh, table mark two, and I'll just do a brief explanation of this. Input to the crafting table mark two is from any sides. The output from the crafting table mark two is the top. And as you can see, I have a filter up here. It has no. I probably could have used a uh, 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 the other redstone, red power two um, deployer, not deployer, but whichever the other one is. But I used the filter because I just had an extra one on me. So I do that, and what it's doing is anything that it gets crafted in the marked crafting table mark two here will be pulled out using this filter and headed to this chest. And in this case, what we're making is lava cells. And the reason we're doing that is for our uh, geothermal generator. Okay, and in this case we're going to have an excess which is the the extra bucket and those are designated to come out the bottom. So the filter that I have down here is on the bottom, pulling out the buckets, putting them back in the deployer which is just redoing the system. The only thing that's not automatic here is the empty cell generator. But I did bring with me a crafting table and we'll just make a few, fill it back up. And one other thing to note here is I threw down a world anchor too, so this thing will always be in operation. So every time I come here, this will just be filled up with lava cells so we can refill all of our, our engines. We can upgrade this by two ways, having a way to automatically create our cells, and the other one is uh, possibly using an ender chest so I can just put them in this ender chest and then pull them out of the ender chest on in the overworld. Alright, so before I step forward, I'm going to go ahead and create a lift linking book. And as you notice, we're creating a linking book in the nether. I did do this before, but uh, I lost my position, so we'll have to go back and redo our, our book on the shelf. And where we pop in is where I plan to do our geothermal facility, which is one thing we'll be covering in this episode as well. Okay, so without further ado, let's hopefully we get rid of this uh, screen lag we're getting here. Just every now and again, I'll hit a little blip, just like that, a little chunk. But... Um, Okay, so now that we have that, uh, I want to put that book down in our in our link table room, for lack of a better term. Ooh, I probably should have checked that first. Uh, well, at any rate, I think it was this one. 
everybody watching the video can just rewind it, but I'm playing, so I can't. So let's give this one a shot and see where it puts us. Perfect. So it puts us right in our room. We can come in here. We can grab our lava cells that we so wish. And that's the other nether book. Uh, I don't even really want that anymore. So well, I'll go back to the overworld and I'll just throw it on the ground somewhere. Okay. All right. So now that we got our lava cell generator up and running, I didn't do the crafting table, but uh, I can fix that a little bit later. It's not important for the episode. Next thing that we want to do is start our geothermal. As you can see, I did make some lava cells previously to the episode. So I'll keep the project table on me because we will need that. I uh, did initially, when I made this, uh, I, I did the crafting table mark one and uh, it didn't do the trick for me. So uh, we're, we're going to keep on going. All right. So the next thing up is our geothermal generator. And I, I really like, this is like one of my favorite types of... Uh, of power in the game. It is a industrial craft power and I went ahead and I've created all the things that I need. Let's see, we have 34 th geothermal generators. It's a little bit more than needed but that's okay. And an MFSU. Alright, so let me show you the configuration of how this all works. We're going to be using our pneumatic tubes and the reason for that is that so we don't have any oh, little purple dudes everywhere. Alright. Okay, we're back and we fixed that issue. Nothing a little restart can't fix. So anyway, we're on to our geothermal generators. And I uh, want to show you this, what we got as a setup here. And we have a really good system for not allowing for some overflow. And I'll just show you how this works. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually create a full 5x5 five five layer of pneumatic tubing. And just going to make a grid for us. Nothing too crazy, nothing too fancy. And because of the way the power is generated, we actually need, that makes 25, we need 26 geothermal generators to make this work properly. So, what we're going to need to do is plop down our 26 generators now. And we'll just get this going. Oops, don't want to click on it. And yeah, I should be just be able to lay it down on the tubing itself. Okay. And puts down our 26 generators. And then what we'll need to do is we'll need to feed these with our uh, lava cells in order to get these going. Now the power output of this is just over the power output of an MFSU, which is why we need to use this, this exact amount. So the next thing I want to do is put down the MFSU, and then we'll wire this thing up. Okay, MFSU, and we'll put it here with the power output that way. We are going to have to convert this power, so we will need to do some transformers. And then we'll need to put a filter there, and then that means the chest will go right over top of this. And I will need to make a filter, because I did use... I did make three, but uh, I'm now one short. So I'll show you how to make a filter as well, and the things that go into that. So we'll be putting the chest down here, that's where we want to get rid of the linking book. And I did make a diamond chest, just because uh, we have the iron chest mods, and that has quite a large inventory to it. And, okay, next up is I think we want to prime all these. I didn't grab... No, I didn't grab them yet. I do have those lava cells that I want to use. So we'll go ahead and grab those out of our inventory here. And while we're in here, let's go ahead and make ourselves a filter. And let's see what we got here. Alright, gonna need a few redstones. I do need a. This is an alloy furnace. This is a red power too. I'm just gonna need one of these uh, red doped wafers. And I believe the rest of it is. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. No, this one I'm gonna have to look up the recipe. So, filter. Let's take a look. So, it's a red doped wafer, piston in the middle, cobblestone, and gold on the edges. So gold on the edges, piston in the center, red dope wafer should just be about done, and it is. Red dope wafer on the bottom, and cobblestone around the edges. Okay, so now that we got our filter, and let's go ahead and grab our fiber cables. Uh, might be a little short on that, but that's okay. And let's see, do we have our screwdriver? I don't know if we do or not. Hmm, <laughs> hmm, hmm. 
Seems that I have left it somewhere. Where did I put it? No matter. We can just make another one. It's always good to see two. It is a stick and an iron ingot, which I don't have any over there. So just grab some from over here. And that is our screwdriver. It's probably sitting around somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where, though. Um, okay. Also picked up a gas here while I was in the nether. That was kind of nice. That'll come in handy later. And we got our fiber optic cables. Okay. All right. That is facing the right way. That's uh, going to be good. And then we're going to put down our filter right here. And oh, I didn't pick up the... All right. Now, this little red bar here is the way that it's going to go. And then this, this large stone-facing object is where it pulls from. Uh, so in our case... Oops. I did not want to do that. There we go. In our case, what we want to use in the filter, we're not actually going to put anything in here, but if... Actually, we are going to put one thing in there. We're going to put a stack of 64 so we don't have a lot of extra lag in the pipes. We'll put a stack of 64 lava cells so it only pulls out a stack of 64 lava cells. Let's go see how much more we have also created because we do need to prime these things up and get everything going. Alright, so this is going. Looking pretty good. And that's why I built it the way I did. And then if I come back over here, I should be right at the chest. Isn't that nice how that all works? Alright, so in our filter here, what we want to do is pop in a 64 lava cell so it only pulls out 64 at a time and we'll prime the rest of it in there and now the only other thing that we need to get this going is a redstone signal and the way that we do that on a repetitive pattern is we'll need something called a timer and I'll explain that in just a moment but before I do that since I have them on me I'm going to go ahead and just wire this all up with our fiber optic cable up to our MFSU boom okay very good Oh, no, 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 we need to get these stone wafers, and as you can see, I already made one for our nether, our nether uh, lava cell generator, but we'll make a few more. All you got to do is put stone in a furnace, and each stone will create two of those wafers. Okay, so now that we're here, to make a timer, we are going to need three stone wires, which is redstone over a stone wafer. One, two, three. And we are going to need a um, stone cathode. And just one of those. We'll need a stone pointer, which is the same recipe with the redstone torch in the center, and stone wafer that makes a stone pointer. And then we need a couple of these stone anodes, which are uh, it's my least favorite recipe because you can't make exactly the right amount that you need. But it makes three each. As you can see, it's three stone wafers across the bottom, and then kind of a T junction in the redstone formation. That will make three of those. And we only need two, so we're going to have a few extra, but that, that's, uh, that's okay. All right, so we'll take all of our stone wafers out, and we'll arrange them in this pattern. Stone pointer in the center, stone wafers on the top. One, two, three. Two of those, and a stone anode here, and that gives us a timer. All right, what a timer does is it just is a rotating pointer essentially and it will allow us to send a redstone signal out at re regular intervals and we don't need it too quick and but uh, yeah, let's put those in here too we don't need it to be too fast but we need it to be fast enough to fill up all these all these uh, lava cells or these geothermal generators I'm sorry okay so we're gonna go ahead and not even gonna worry about the redstone wiring I'm just gonna put it down right here and just to show you how it works. And there it goes. And as you can see, geothermal is pulled out 64 cells and 64 cells. And by the rules of the pneumatic tubes, it always goes to the closest one. So as you can see, it's, it's starting to get going here. And this should start to be filling up too. And it's filling up pretty quick. Now when all these are going at full blast, it will uh, allow us to that might be already done. Yep. 
So it will allow us to keep this thing at full power at all times. All right, so that is that. And what we're going to be doing next, and I think I'll save it for our next episode. We'll keep this one short and sweet. Actually, I didn't want to do that. I'll leave that going for now. Is I'm going to put our transformer boxes, and we're going to uh, we're going to highlight a mod that's in the Technic pack, which is the whoa 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 whoa. I hear an ogre, flying things. All right, come here. All right, we killed the horse. The ogre. He's right there. He's always right there. Mm. All right. Well, here we go. We're gonna go kill an ogre. Two ogres, no less. They are just wreak havoc on my stuff. Come on, come on, come on. The blue ones do drop diamonds, though. Hey, I got one. Where's that horse at? Not dead yet, am I? Nope. But I am very, very hungry. Whew. Now. I guess the other question is, is can I get my butt out of here? <laughs> it's always a good question. Let's see. Oh, man, did they almost wreak some havoc on my... St oh. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yeah, I gotcha. What do you got now? What? All right. Got your leather. Hey, why not? Let's grab some sapphire while we're down here. Let's be productive about it. All right, and I guess we can just, um, hmm, <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to get out of here. Actually, while I'm down here, let's just throw down some torches and so we don't get a major ogre infestation, but I swear, those guys are like the most destructive things in Technic. They can wreak the most, ha most havoc. Like, this was solid rock before, and they busted this all up. All right, let's dig ourselves out. Okay, and back to what I was saying is we are going to highlight a mod called the Transformers mod, which is really, really nice. It uh, takes the place of forestry. It used to have electric engines to be able to uh, convert our buildcraft and industrial craft power, but uh, in Technic, there is a Transformers mod. I do rather enjoy that, but we will save that one for the next episode. So thanks for watching. If you like it, please like it. If you want to see more, please subscribe, and we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.